and thanks for staying with us. Uh, my name is Daryl Kwa. We begin with we begin with a coverage of breaking news. Uh, in a surprise move, MPs from the governing New Patriotic Party say President Okufuado must immediately sack Finance Minister Ken Ofoyata and the Minister of State at the Finance Ministry, Charles Edouard. MPP MPs have uh, been resolute in their support of the Finance Minister, fighting off efforts of the NDC minority to censure him. But on the first day of a new meeting of Parliament, they say enough is enough and Ken Ofoyata must go. Speaking to journalists in Parliament, spokesperson for the group and MP for Asantia Kim North, Andy Apel Kubi, said they are concerned about the mismanagement of the economy. Majority caucus of the Parliament of Ghana, and we here so present present a, a greater number of the said caucus. My name is Andy Apia Kubi, and I am only here as spokesperson for the majority group. Without more, we have had occasions to defend allegations of conflict of interest, lack of confidence, trust against the leadership of our finance ministry. The recent developments within our economy are of great concern to the greater majority of members of our caucus and our constituents. We have made our grave concern to the president through the parliamentary leadership and the leadership of the party without any positive response. We are by this medium communicating our strong desire that the president change the Minister of Finance and the Minister of State in the Finance Ministry without further delay in order to restore hope into the financial sector and reverse the downward trend in the growth of the economy. The summary of our concerns lead, leads to a plea that the Minister of Finance, Honorable Kenneth Ufuriata, and the Minister of State of uh, the Ministry of Finance, Honorable Charles Edubwahi, be removed from office. We pray that this prayer will be carried to the presidency. We thank you very much. While the group also warned if Ken of Weata and Charles Edubwahi are not sacked, no government business will succeed in the House. We want to serve notice, and notice is hereby served, that until uh, such persons, as aforementioned, are made to resign or removed from office, we, members of the majority caucus here in parliament, will not participate in any business of government by or for a president by any other minister. We hope that those of us on the back bench and members of the majority caucus will abide by this prayer. We are saying that if our request is not responded to positively, we will not be present for the budget hearing, neither will we participate in the debate. Thank you very much. Well, uh, covering this for us, parliamentary correspondent Kukua Sante, um, what a dramatic day first day has been in parliament, and this is unprecedented, Kuku. Very, very much unprecedented. What we've seen usually in Parliament is that members on both sides usually support their party. And indeed, the minor, majority MPs, NDP MPs, have been supporting Ken of Uriata true and true. The minority have tried so many times without success to pass a vote of censure against the finance minister. They've not succeeded any of those times. Indeed, just a moment from now, the minority leader himself, Harvard Bissu, is about to provide an update on the signatures they've gathered from both the minority and majority side, if possible, to remove Finance Minister Ken Ofuriata through a vote of censure. We don't know if the Speaker will admit this motion. But just like you said, very, very much interesting times, unprecedented moves from the majority side, the government party seeking out to force the hands of the president to sack his minister. It's something we've not seen before. You just see the minority chief, um, Mohamed Muntak Mubarak, just about to address the press conference on this matter. Let's listen in. And to say that we are pleasantly surprised and very happy that our colleagues opposite might have heard about our intention 
which we manifested yesterday by filing a vote of censure at the Speaker's office with all the signatures. I'm sure my colleagues, Honorable Blackwell and Co., will forward the soft copies to you to see that yesterday we gave, and majority leader also admitted that at the business committee we hinted them. And then we did file this uh, vote of censure on behalf of the minority with a worrying how do we make up the two third? But graciously, this morning, we noticed that our colleagues opposite are saying eight of them are ready and willing to support us. I think uh, we've taken more than enough from the finance minister. And we are happy that this is happening. And we hope they will keep to faith that they will not chicken out along the line. I, I will want my ranking on finance, our ranking on finance, to read the reasons, the grounds, why we think the finance minister should pave way for another person to possibly help salvage where we have reached. Because if we are not careful, we will just have a collapsed country. And I don't think anybody wants us to have a collapsed country. So I'll call on Honorable Atuforsin to read the grounds. Thank you very much. Um, to, start, to, to start with, colleagues and everyone, you recognize that the minority members of parliament are all in black today. We are mourning the democracy of the Republic of Ghana, as well as mourning the state of the Ghanaian economy. Our economy is in such a bad shape. If care is not taken, we will crash this economy to a point of no return. And that is why we have decided to mourn the state of the Ghanaian economy and to send a strong signal to government that we will not check it out. The economy is our livelihood. We will stand firm for the people of Ghana because they deserve it. We think the people of Ghana has done no wrong to deserve this kind of treatment and mismanagement coupled with ineptitude. And so we are acting from now. And so from what the Chief Whip has asked me to do, I am reading the grounds signed by the Chief Whip of the Minority Caucus, indicating the reasons why we in the minority want our minister responsible for finance to step aside. The first one is the fact that we are seeing a despicable conflict of interest, ensuring that he directly benefits from Ghana's economic woes as his companies receive commissions and other unethical contractual advantage, particularly from the Ghana's debt overhang. The second ground has to do with an unconstitutional withdrawals from the consolidated fund in blatant contravention with Article 178 of the 1992 Constitution and the Petroleum Management Act, supposedly for the construction of the President Cathedral. The third point has to do with the illegal payment of oil revenues into offshore account in flagrant violation of Article 176 of the 19 Constitution and the PFM Act, uh, as well as the Petroleum Revenue Act, Act 815. The fourth one has to do with deliberate and dishonest misreporting of economic data to Parliament, where he decided to account for expenditure as amortization and setting expenditure as footnote in the financial reporting standard, contrary to global financial reporting standards. The sixth one has to do with the fifth one has to do with the fiscal reckless, recklessness, obviously leading to the crash of the Ghanaian city, which is currently the worst performing currency in the entire globe. And then number six has to do with the alarming incompetence and frightening ineptitude. In fact, if he had acted fast, we could have salvaged this economy. So frightening ineptitude resulting in the collapse of the Ghanaian economy and an excruciating cost of living crisis that we are seeing. And finally, on the last ground, we are saying that we've seen gross mismanagement of the Ghanaian economy which has occasioned untold and unprecedented hardship to the people of Ghana. Colleagues, we can't do this alone.
Uh, so that was a uh, ranking member on the Finance Committee of Parliament, Cassiel Atuforsen, addressing uh, the press. Um, as we continue to cover news, that the MPs are asking that uh, Finance Minister Ken Ofriata is sacked. I don't know if Kweku Asante is still on. Kweku, if you can hear me. I mean, this is unbelievable. A few years ago, we were celebrating the successes of the Finance Minister Ken Ofriata. Then the pandemic struck, and then the Ukraine uh, war came into, into force, and now we are dealing with a global economic shock that is affecting countries like Ghana. And we've seen how that has impacted on the city, on inflation. And right now, it appears the finance minister does not uh, have a hang of the situation. Just a couple of for our audience, what has been um, the, the happenings over time that has brought us to this place where now the MPs are asking that the finance minister goes? Like you said, the finance minister came during some trying times. The NDC government at the time had gone to an IMF program, and the finance minister came from Yalta, took over in 2017 and completed that deal. The president had been referencing that, said that, listen, this is a minister who has very much, in a, in a, in a very competent fashion, led our country on a path of economic salvation. And so things stabilized then, but just like you said, COVID came. Well, there was the war in Ukraine, among other things, that the government had cited one of the reasons why the economy is tumbling. But the majority and the minority side both say today in unison. And like I've been, I've been reporting in Parliament for a while now, this is the first time that the minority and majority MPs, NDC and MPP MPs, are agreeing on anything, let alone forcing the hands of the president to sack a high-ranking minister. Okay. No less a person than the cousin of the president, mm -hmm. finance minister in Suyata. So a number of things have happened, but they see that these are not reasons for what the economy is now. And so the president must step aside. And the finance minister. All right, we'll go back and listen to uh, Cassiel at Tufosin, who is uh, still speaking. So concentrate on making the aid instead of breaking the aid. That is your mandate. Anything else is secondly. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah. All right, and so we just uh, saw that a press conference conclude the ranking member on the Finance Committee of Parliament, Kassila Tufo, saying, and I just want to uh, conclude with you one more thing. Um, Kweku, the minority leader, Harina Idrisu, we, are, uh, we understand, uh, filed a vote of censure motion uh, before the House, we are waiting the Speaker's action on it. Uh, what does this essentially mean? The vote of censure, according to the rules of Parliament, is one that will lead to the removal of the individual business. When that motion is found, we need to tear of MPs, according to the standing of this, for that to succeed. The third of MPs in Parliament currently is 183. The NDC MPs clearly do not have the numbers to be able to go on their own. They only have 137 MPs. But with the support of 80 NPP MPs now, they have more than they will need. They will need the number of 200. And they will easily pass a vote of censure against the finance minister. So what we are expecting is that by the post of day today, the Speaker of Parliament will admit that motion. And if that motion is admitted as early as tomorrow, we will see a debate in the House. And a secret vote, just like the election of Speaker of Parliament, that vote is secret. And NPP and NDC MPs will all have their vote to decide whether or not Ken Furiata should stay on as finance minister. So we are going to the decision of the finance minister now. But clearly, if the NPP MPs are to stand by their word, the 80 MPs, who the majority that in some acknowledges, are now supporting the NDC MPs to get finance minister out, then it's a done deal for Ken Furiata. Mm -hmm. All right, Kuku Asante, thank you so much uh, for joining us. I appreciate your coverage. We'll come back to you if there's anything uh, breaking. I want to bring in our guests for this uh, afternoon, uh, Professor Williams Vipra, who is with the Andrews University in the U.S., also um, Dr. Daniel Amate and Neem, who is Executive Director of uh, the Policy Initiative for uh, Economic Development. Thanks uh, to you both for your patience um, as we uh, covered the press briefing. Important to get the uh, the minority, minority side of all that is happening. And, and so I want to start with you, uh, Dr. Uh, Professor Pepra. What do you make of this latest move and coming from MPs uh, of the governing party? Good afternoon uh, for calling me. Um, so in, in finance, there's something we call the signal effect. Um, 
when you want to see a change in economic activities um, and you realize that the past is not good or something that can help you to bring out that change, um, you seem to give a signal to the market that the one leading the negotiation or discussion has been replaced by a new person. And in that case, it gives some form of confidence. Um, if you remember, uh, before the parliament went on recess, um, the majority side believed that the finance minister could help turn things around it. Um, when you had a U-turn that you are now going to IMF. But it has become very obvious that um, a lot of discussions and decisions um, have been delayed and which has worsened the situation for Ghana in terms of the currency being devalued. So this action taken by both the about 80 parliamentarians from the minority side and, and all the um, 135, uh, 137 uh, minority side um, is going to give a signal to the economy that we want a change and a posi possibly a positive change a new leader to come and, and, and take us through. And I'm sure um, people, they have taken cue from what has happened in the United Kingdom, where there have been a change um, in uh, both the Prime Minister and then the Finance, what they call the Exchequer, and the Finance Minister. So it's a signal that 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 must be done. And I'm sure if the, the President has delayed or refusing to do it, now they are forced in his hand to make sure that the one doing the negotiation is changed. A new person is brought in as a finance minister. And with the hope that um, Ghanaians will now have the confidence back in the economy and that the city will okay. stop depreciating. Uh, Dr. Martini, why decision to take? How is this helpful? Thank you very much, Dari. I think if you recall very well, uh, when the finance minister was appointed, uh, I granted an interview with your good self on this powerful platform, and I indicated, considering his background, having worked in the private sector, and more importantly, the capital market expertise, I'm of the view that he should be able to drive this economy very well. Well, it started quite well, and prior to, the, to COVID, things were actually gearing up in terms of the macroeconomic fundamentals. We're growing averaging around 7% of GDP, and then when COVID steps in, Right after COVID, it, it appears mm. that the economic management team and by extension, the finance minister seems not to have solution to whatever is happening. Uh, more importantly, uh, the global shocks that is feeding on the dom domestic e economy. So yes, uh, psychologically, it makes sense. If you, 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 are, you are asking that the finance minister, minister should leave office for a new brain, a new mind, the signal is that uh, it tells Ghanaians that, oh yes, uh, the president wanted a very sense of agency by way of addressing our current economic situation. So psychologically, it gives confidence to the citizens and also to uh, the investing community, yes, that we are varying our game to ensure that we come out with the new ideas, new minds. Mm -hmm. If you recall, right after COVID, people started asking for the finance minister to resign. Uh, but more importantly, I can see that what is happening in uh, Great Britain has further facilitated the process. Mm -hmm. So yes, I'm of the view that the president should do the need for. I've even said that by now the president should be able to uh, reshuffle the, 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 the ministers and then try and bring some new, bring some board, moving people from one ministry to another ministry. What, what it does basically is that it gives people the room to come on board with a new sense of energy and a new sense of direction mm -hmm. by pursuing the whatever policy that is on the ground. So I, I agree, and then it is right. very instructive and very significant that this time around we have people from the ruling government supporting the minority, and that that to me it's a very positive signal. Yeah, for I'm, I'm president, but the president said he he was confident in his finance minister and his ability to uh, get us out of this economic turmoil. Uh, Professor Pepra, uh, they are not just calling for the head of the finance minister; the MPs want the Bank of Ghana boss to go, and th there have been discussions here where we've talked about. Uh, the Bank of Ghana doing so much in terms of monetary measures and that we are not just seeing the fiscal measures pull through. And so is there any justification calling for the Bank of Ghana boss to step aside as well? I mean, um, yes, um, the justification is that the role of the, of, the, of the Bank of the Governor is to bring about price stability. Mm. He has also failed 
in ensuring that he uses the monetary tools that he has to bring about the price stability. So now we want, a, 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 let me put it, a total change in mindset in, in implementation of issues. So he must also leave. Remember that I also granted an interview and said that they delayed in taking some measures. And I even, I wrote an article with the graph projecting where the um, interest rate and monetary policy rate were going to go. But they didn't take the action. And indeed, the, the World Bank and IMF also confirmed that the delay has. So he must also give way. And we shouldn't forget um, the, the the Bank of Ghana operates under the Ministry of Finance. So if you are asking the minister to leave, he must also give way to a new crop of people mm. who can assist and bring out that change. As mentioned, now where we are is it's more of psychological than economic or finance because already the city has devalued so much. Um, prices are out of gear. If you don't take care, there will be unrest in the country. So once government gives the signal that those in charge of the man economic management team are being removed, the new ones are being replaced, the confidence will come, come back. So this is also very, very important that that decision is, is, is taken care of. And not, not him alone, not, not him alone. Um, you see, he, he works with even the board of, the, of, the, of, of Bank of Ghana must also take the blame. We shouldn't only focus on the governor. The crop of people there, and the kind of decision they are taken, Ghana must thank them for their service, and then we bring in a new team to signal that yes, this change that we are we are focusing on will be a great change. All right, uh, I, I want to come to you, uh, Dr. Daniel Martini. Uh, fundamentally, what we have seen is a problem is a lack of policy to deal with it. And so, if the finance minister goes, uh, if the Bank of Ghana uh, boss goes, we still haven't had any policy measure, at least in the uh, medium to long term to deal with the challenges that we've faced over the years with our local currency, with the economy as well. We are not hearing that from the government. Yes, uh, thank you very much. Yeah, within the medium to long term perspective, uh, the solution is simple. We must ensure that rather that we have a competitive urge to produce, we produce that. Uh, but there is a political lack of will to be able to drive this agenda. The reason is simple. Uh, we have political financiers and politicians in that space. They have been importing so much from other economies. They import poultry, rice, sugar, where we have to produce local. So once you have people who are into decision making and they are participating in that space, there's no way they will take a very bold policy or decision by ensuring that we empower our local producers to produce in order to minimize the import. If you recall, the reason for which there's so much pressure on the city is because there's a, a high demand for the dollar. Mm. Why is it a high demand for the dollar? Because our economy is largely import-driven. People need about to import almost everything into the economy. Uh, so in, in respect of policy direction, one was expected. And the 1F should okay. focus fundamentally on areas where we have competitive urge to produce by way of minimizing or reducing import from other economies. So all right, me, thank you so much. That's only one way. Dr. Martinim, we've got to go. Our time is up. I appreciate your time. Uh, Dr. Daniel Martinim, who is Executive Director of the Policy Initiative for Economic Development, as well as uh, Professor Williams Wipra, Associate Professor of Finance at the Andrews University. Breaking uh, this are MPs from both sides of the House calling for the finance minister Ken Ofeata to be sacked. We'll have continuing coverage, bring you details and some more perspective throughout the day. Do stay with us here on Join News.